Welcome to episode 25 of my POA podcast, Black Hand and Beyond. It's kind of a milestone tonight that we're on episode 25, and 25 usually represents silver and anniversaries, so even though this isn't really an anniversary, I decided to play a, a play on words and talk about uh, the topic of silver, mainly series Silver Prince, who was a POA stallion and his family. Uh, we're also going to next week talk about his uh, grandson, the Silver Kid, because I don't believe we'll get it all in tonight because Sirius Silver Prince, a lot of his foals and grand get went on to do a lot. So if we talk about all the accomplishments, it's going to take a while. So tonight shouldn't be too long of a show, It'll probably a little over an hour, depending on how fast I talk and the comments. The last few episodes, uh, I've really been proud of all the comments. A lot of people... Uh, pitching in and uh, asking questions or just making comments, talking amongst themselves, whatever. Uh, it's all cool. So people's already uh, joining in, sitting in the combine. That's got to be probably Corey, uh, maybe Dean, but I bet it's Corey. So, and then somebody said, good evening, Kent. So I just see Facebook user on my end. Some people it comes up. If you're on Ecamm Live, it'll come up with your name, but otherwise it just says Facebook user. So Let's get into some pictures tonight. We have uh, over 90 pictures and information, so we got a lot of stuff uh, to go through tonight. So, uh, Corey or whoever's in the combine, you don't raise your hand because you're working, but if you've owned a silver kid relative, raise your hand. Uh, of course, the Damons are the breeders of him, so uh, they own, owned him and they owned a lot of offspring. Of course, now they've had a long-term lease on him, but uh, we're starting out the show with him, even though we're not going to talk about him in depth. He has so many foals, the Silver Kid, that have won. You know, he's, his foals have won over 200 national titles. Without updating it for 21, his foals have won 206 national titles. So that's a lot of foals that have won that many titles. So the next episode, episode 26, uh, we'll be talking about his foals in depth. That way I'll be able to give credit uh, not as much credit as deserves, but a lot of credit to the kids and uh, show a lot of pictures and stuff like that. But tonight we're going to concentrate on his uh, grandsire and even a little further back than that, some of the Siri horses uh, that started this bloodline, but in particular the Silver Prince side of the Siri line. So here's the list I was talking about. Uh, excuse the 9399, I don't know how that got on there, but this is from uh, the beginning of the international show until 2020's show. Uh, this wasn't, uh, the 21 wasn't in there uh, this last year. I haven't updated it yet, but I just wanted to show how the Silver Kid is first. And then of course he's a son of Hive Avatar, who if you go down there, he's number 14. Hive Avatar is a son of our main topic tonight, who's Sirius Silver Prince. He's ranked tied for 17th. And then Sirius Silver Prince's sire is Sirius Spotted Cord, which he's not on this list, but he's tied for 60th. Uh, he's on the second page of this list. Remember about 900 and some sires, and uh, Sirius Spotted Cord, the Appaloosa, is actually on the second page, and he has 10 halter wins and 17 performance wins. He's tied with Avatar's Mucho and TX's Chip and Array uh, as of 2020. That may have changed this year, uh, but with 27 wins. So I got a cool list here. It didn't make the show tonight, but I took off some of the sires of that list, and I made a little list of my own here, and it's right here. And I have, this is mind-blowing if you, for the people like me that study this, Here's four generations. I'm gonna start with Siri Spotted Cord, who was an Appaloosa bred by Paula Cooper Corson in Arizona. And he was used in her POA program, and we're gonna show some of his offspring in a minute. And uh, so he, his foals won 10 halter classes at the national show, 17 performance for 27. Siri's Silver Prince's foals won 10 halter classes, 42 performance. His son, Hive Avatar's foals, won 11 halter classes, 49 performance. And then his son, so far, the Silver Kid, guess what? 10 halter classes, 
196 performance. Of course, he skewed really heavy in performance, and we have a lot more performance glasses nowadays uh, than they did back in the day when this first started. But 10, 10, 11, and 10, that's unbelievable. And then they got better as it went on. Of course, Series Spotted Core didn't have that many registered POAs. A lot of his wins, or most of his wins, of course, was his f famous son, uh, Series Sparkle Champagne, was a half-brother to Series Silver Prince. And then Series Silver Prince sired more performance than his dad. Avatar had more performance than his dad. And now the Silver Kid has eclipsed the bloodline and everyone else in POAs with 206. You also got a couple other relatives up close on the list. I'm a Silver Royal is ranked six, mainly because of his HMH foals. And then Marlene Borjohn's broodmare that won uh, two years in a row. I think her name was... Uh, I'm a Contessa Royale or something like that, or can, I might have screwed it up, or Continental, Continental Royale, I'm sorry, uh, Marlene, but she was a nice mare, Mark conditioned her and showed her, and she was a daughter of the Silver Kid, and she won, and then of course HMH Super Sox has won a bunch, and then she's had some full siblings that won, so that's why I'm a Silver Royal has 89 wins, and then Avatar's Mucho is tied with his great, great, whatever he is, great, great grandsire series Spotted Cord, with 27 wins as a sire, uh, he's got zero in halter and 27 in performance, tied for 60th. So it's a strong line uh, that's been going a long time. Of course, the the Siri horses, there's a lot of different lines of the Siri. Siri Chief is very famous, of course, and that's not what we're going to talk about tonight. I'm going to show a picture of him. Uh, but I just wanted to show a few modern POAs here. This is a picture I took at this year's Congress. Of course, this is the three-time national champion mayor, JBJ's Kidazzle. Uh, she's related to Series Silver Prince through, uh, um, of course, Kiddo Bounce. Kiddo Bounce's granddam on the bottom side is Tough My Tough, who's a Kiddo Tough daughter, but her mother was a Series Silver Prince daughter. So it goes back a ways, but, and I apologize again for the picture, but I this mare don't look bad any she could be laying down in the mud and look good so uh the beers are back but who cares she's getting her uh, ribbon wrapped around her so look at that body and of course record setting three years in a row but i know a lot of people don't realize she's related to uh series silver prince just like the grand champion stallion this year is related to series silver prince uh, one of the loudest colored stallions in the last 20 years or so is his grandsire r y major equity uh, from the gardeners in Utah, and of course this one's from the gardeners as well, and uh, Pam A. owns him now, but uh, R.Y. Major Equity, uh, his pictures, Ann Dykstra, I asked her today for some pictures, but I asked a little too late, and they came in right at the end. I tried to get one on here, so if it pops up during this, it'll be kind of funny. One might pop up while I'm uh, doing the slideshow, uh, but anyway, his R.Y. Major Equity is a beautiful bay-colored horse. Of course, he's passed away now, but to think that he traces back to Sirius Silver Prince is kind of ironic, but that just shows how strong this bloodline is. And uh, we'll talk about how he does trace back here in a minute. Hi, Jan. Tracy's here. Becky's here for a while. That's good. A little while is better than nothing. So we all know the story, or you should know the story, um, of Siri Chief. He was the second registered POA ever. Again, he's not the topic tonight. But uh, the person that registered him with the POA and became a matriarch of the POA breed, Paula Cooper Corson from Wilcox, Arizona, a Red Tail Ranch, and the Siri horses, uh, she had him, and that was her first real famous Appaloosa. Of course, his sire was Arab Tajwal Carr, and then his half brother was the Appaloosa. He ended up being registered as an Appaloosa Siri Sheik, and Paula used him in POAs too. Uh, Paula Cooper raised a lot of Appaloosas. She raised a lot of POAs, but she also registered a lot of Appaloosas. Of course, she, uh, she had a lot of leopards, and that was because of the, the bloodline. And there he is right there, Arab Tajwai Alkar. He was uh, the sire of Siri Chief. He was bred to a pony to get Siri Chief. And then his son was also used pretty heavy in POAs, and that's Siri Chi Sheik. So Siri Sheik, the Appaloosa, and Siri Chief, the POAs, were both used in Paula's program and others as well. So tonight we're gonna concentrate on a grandson of Siri Sheik, and that's Siri's Silver Prince. Now, 
Series Silver Prince on the top side was sired by Series Spotted Cord, one of the Appaloosas that I mentioned that Paula used. Paula used many Appaloosa stallions over the years in her POA program. Uh, most of them she was the breeder of. Uh, such stallions as, of course, Series Chic, uh, Series Snow King, Series Spotted Cord, Series Jolly, Sheba's Prince, and Series Spaniard were just a few of the Siri Appaloosa stallions she used in the POA program. So there's four very notable offspring of Siri Spotted Cord, the one we're going to talk about tonight, Siri's Silver Prince, and then one of the most famous gildings ever is right here, and that's Siri Sparkle Champagne. He's one of my personal favorites. And then he has a full sister named Siri's Brushfire, and I know Marlene Borjan had her for a while and the pony farm had her and uh, Kenwell Ranch is selling her here. Just a great put together mare and a lot of horse bloodline in there. But there you see Siri Spot, Spotted Cord and he's also by Siri Jolly, uh, another Appaloosa stallion that uh, Paula used. So and then another Siri Spotted Cord offspring that was pretty well known was Siri Wonder. Siri Wonder was out east for quite a while, and he was in Kansas with the McLarens. He's actually the sire of uh, Chief Joseph S., and uh, he's also uh, was owned by uh, Gerald and Lori Meadows of Kansas, uh, Julie Stevens' aunt and uncle. So uh, his his blood has went around in POAs quite a bit, and uh, it's still out there today. So he was also a little stallion, like Sirius Silver Prince that was used. So you had the full siblings, and then this little guy, and then here's a photo I'm kind of proud of. This is the first time it's been published that I know of. Rare, rare photo of Series Silver Prince. Now, when I wrote the book, Spots Included, I tried to find pictures of Series Silver Prince, and I can only find two that were ever published. And they were taken the same day at the international sale when he sold in 1977. He was five years old. One, he was up against the building, and the other one was a close-up shot of his head because he's got a beautiful head. And uh, I, uh, I asked for this picture from the POA office, and Lindsay Zom got this picture for me. So thank you to her. She's doing a great job uh, at the POA office. And uh, so I believe this is the first time this picture has ever been published if you consider social media publishing it so uh, and he was probably three in this picture this would have been taken in Arizona at Paula's farm there on her ranch and uh, he was now the funny thing is he was born in 1972 of course ranchers and people raising more horses they don't always register them as babies Paula did register some of her stuff as weanlings but he was registered in 75 as a three-year-old uh, well, then she had another foal born in 73 named Ceres Lazarus. And Ceres Lazarus was registered as a three-year-old in 76. And he's the stallion of that generation that she went on with. A lot of her foals in the late 70s were by Ceres Lazarus. And to my knowledge, Paula never registered a foal by Ceres Silver Prince, even though she liked him enough to show him and consign him to the national sale and promote him. Uh, but as a five-year-old, he still didn't have any registered foals when he left Arizona. So I hope you enjoy this picture here. We'll see a copy of this again towards the end of the show. Another thing to keep in mind about this horse, when you see him in person, I seen him one time when I was nine years old. Of course, when you're nine years old, he was running out in a pasture with some mares. And uh, if you would have asked me how tall he would have been, I would have said, well, he's you know that tall because I was a little kid. But I probably would have said 55 inches or so and he was just a little over 51 inches. But he had a horse stature about him because he was so much horse and he just had that look about him. And I think that's what helped make him a, a great sire. Uh, a little trivia here inside part about my family. We actually, the first mare we ever bred to get a POA, we bred a, our first grade mare we bought. She was a POA mare that had lost her way. She was tiny, like 46 inches. And uh, we hauled her to Wally Cates in Minnesota because he was only about 40 some miles away to breed her to this horse. Of course, we didn't know much about, I didn't, we didn't know anything about Paula Cooper or any series or anything, but the mare didn't settle. So uh, we never did have anything related to this bloodline, but ironically, that was the first POA stallion we ever attempted to breed to was Series Silver Prince. 
Another trivia thing about him is he was born eight days before me. So he was born July 20th, 1972 in Arizona. That had to be hot out there uh, in July, but that's when it's reported that he was born, July 20th, 1972. So in 1975, Paula hadn't been real active. Of course, she always was more of a breeder, but she, uh, she took some horses to the Ventura, California uh, International Show in 1977, and she took a yearling filly and series silver prints, for sure those two, and look at how many entries were in that class. Class number nine, four-year-old and older uh, stallions, so it was the large class, 50 to 54 back then, 19 entries. And little series Silver Prince was on the small side of that class, and he still placed fourth. And there's some big names in there. Of course, Double Tough, that was his third on the way to four titles. Prince Plotich Jr. was reserve grand twice to Double Tough. He was a hardship. The top two were both hardship. Uh, Prince Plot Jr. was all registered horse. And SS Jackpot was a beautiful snow cap that was in California a long time. He came, of course, from... Uh, Spuds and Dottie Snyder from Montana. And then there you have Series Silver Prince, probably the first time. I know the first time he's at a big show, but I believe that was the first year she probably showed him in 77. She might have showed him in 76. Uh, but people were so happy that, you know, this legend of the POAs, even in the late 70s already, famous POA person had registered the second one that she'd decided to show that they talked her into coming to the sale in Iowa. She hadn't consigned anything to the sale hardly ever and uh, George Lond had a discussion with her and she decided to consign a few to the 1977 sale. Another inside tip here, a little cool story, she's not uh, a series Silver Prince but series Bobby Lee was shown at the same show and this would have ripple effects in the breed to this day and she was a yearling filly and she won the yearling filly class in California and she was uh, the junior champion mare. She beat Salty Miss Leo, who was the two-year-old for junior. Salty Miss Leo went on to be grand champion years and years later. So anyway, uh, series Bobby Lee was one of them. She decided to consign to the sale, and there she is. And you see she's a daughter of Lazarus, not a daughter of series Silver Prince. And some people might not realize who this mare became, but Siri Bobby Lee, two of her granddaughters became uh, mothers to famous POAs, and that is uh, Doc's Tough Mister, who sold for the record high price in 1995, and then uh, Ultimate Bounce. Ultimate Bounce and Doc's Tough Mister are out of two different mares that are both granddaughters of Siri Bobby Lee. So a little cool trivia there. So this was another one she consigned at the 77 sale. And the only reason I put this in here is because of the um, write-up, the owner's statement. And they talk about her. She was a grand champion at the one show and this and that. But then at the bottom, she says, bred to series spotted cord. So that lets you know in 77 they were still using series spotted cord on the place. And... Uh, this is Sir Silver Prince's sire and several other POA champions. Well, in 77, Silver Prince really wasn't known by anybody yet, so that tells you what they thought of him. You know, they'd hauled him to the California, to the National, and he did well, fourth out of 19. And I bet he was getting so many re rave reviews about his head and stuff and just his overall build that they were compelled to put this in this owner statement that this mare was bred to Silver Prince's Sire, and again, this is before he ever hit the Midwest or ever sired a foal. So that's why I put this uh, right up in here. And Shenandoah was an older stallion from the East Coast. He was like a 60-something model. She consigned him at that sale as well because she'd used him for a few years. Of course, a daughter of the famous, or a son of the famous, famous mayor, Cole Robbie. So here is Series Silver Prince's write up. He was lot number five in the sale. And uh, he only brought $1,200. And now his color started getting into question when he came to the sale because he was registered leopard with uh, white with black spots. By the time he was consigned to the sale, he was almost pure white, which we know is gray. 
and uh, people kind of assumed that he probably had the grain gene, which he did, and that would haunt him and his bloodline his whole life. But like I just showed, um, you know, it really hasn't hurt him, has it? It hasn't hurt him in the in the winning circle in the arena at all. So uh, he sold his lot number twelve or number five, I mean, for twelve hundred. He was purchased by uh, George and Pat Lalonde, who had started breeding POAs in Texas, the Cayuga POAs. They were the breeders of those. And when Les Boomhauer decided to step down as the executive secretary, the Lalons moved to Iowa to take over, and George became the executive secretary of the POA breed and kind of was in control of it for the 70s, all the 70s, kind of the golden age of POAs. POAs were kind of really flourishing in the 70s and really turning into a, a small horse look. And George Lond was the executive secretary during that whole period. So I think he was kind of compelled because he talked her into Paula Cooper, of course, and into consigning some POAs that he purchased the stallion. They were kind of getting, you know, they were starting to get a little older by 77. They were they wouldn't be in POAs too many years after this, but they did bring him home near Mason City there. This was the picture that was taken right after the sale. So this was taken at the sale in Iowa. There's the headshot I'm talking about. And these two photos are the only two photos I ever seen until I got that one from the office last week. So, and of course I've seen the horse in person, but I was nine years old. I just remember seeing this big, beautiful white stallion who I thought was, you know, really not like the black stallion, but he was white, and here he was about 51 and three quarters or whatever, a pony. But, uh, you know, when you're nine years old, he looked really big to me. So here's a little trivia, too, before I get to talking about the Lalons a little more. Uh, of course, the Damons ended up buying or owning Series Silver Prince later, but at the same sale, they purchased Jackpot's image as a baby for $550. In 1977 you know years later it'd be 22 years later they would buy Doc's rough and tough or not 22 it'd be 12 years later 89 12 years later they'd buy rough and tough at the sale as a baby for like 825 or something like that but in 77 they purchased jackpots image and didn't purchase series silver prints as an adult stallion and they raised jackpots image and he's gonna play a pivotal part in this whole story here we're gonna we're gonna get around to it. Uh, the gray came from, I believe, Swiss Helm is where it came from, Tracy. And yeah, that is a good question, Lord. But it didn't come from Series Spotted Cord. And uh, then the mother to Series Spot Series uh, Silver Prince was Series Pandora. And you might think maybe she named Pandora that on purpose. I wish I would have met Paula Cooper Corson or got to talk to her. But you know the Pandora's box and. Uh, because her mother was an unregistered mare named Swiss Helm. And Swiss could mean white. I'm just guessing. I'm putting, you know, educated guesses together. But I'm pretty positive that's where the gray comes from. So, okay. So here's the ad. Now, kind of another funny thing. Uh, when Cayuga's bought him, they put an ad in the magazine. Uh, there wasn't a congratulations ad or anything like that. George and Pat Lalonde. Uh, put kind of a cool ad might as well get ahead and some muscle too because like I say Sirius Silver Prince was known for that big jaw and little bitty muzzle and uh, but he was built pretty stout for his height as well so there was the ad after they purchased him there's George and Pat Lalonde probably in the late 60s early 70s that might have been 70 71 it could have been 69 when he took over because I think that was a banquet where Les Boomhauer was retiring, and they moved to Iowa and took over the POAC, like I said. So after he moved to Iowa, and what I wrote in spots included in uh, 19, um, or 2009 when it was published, what I wrote, essentially what was his first full crop was 1979 in Iowa. So, and he was already seven years old, but that would have been his first real full crop. And there was two superstars from that full crop. But at the time, people might not have known they were going to be superstars. And one of them was this little filly here. And this, here's Pat Lalonde about 10 years after we just seen her. And this is Cayuga's Bambi. 
in Cayuga's Bambi grew up to be one of the most famous small mares of all time, especially the 80s and early 90s. Uh, she won the, um, a lot of awards, high point eight and under, set a record doing that. Of course, the Kozer family rode her, Corey Kozer, and then Troy Kozer. And then, of course, uh, uh, Cody Porter rode her, and she won a lot of classes with anybody that showed her. So, And she was a daughter of Series Silver Prince out of one of those good Cayuga's mare, mares. Joker's High Tiger, of course, he's Paper Tiger Sire there on the bottom side. But if you look there, $500 is all this filly sold for. Another thing you'll see is the Midwest Regional Show. Uh, a lot of Series Silver Prince stuff over the years won titles and grands and stuff like that at the Midwest Regional Show, which is one of the toughest regionals out there. So so there's Cayuga's Bambi. I don't have any pictures of her besides this. I could have. Uh, I should have reached out to Corey or somebody and got some. Maybe in future episodes we will. But again, to reiterate, she was one of the, the best small uh, 51 and under mares uh, for performance and stuff uh, of all time. And here she is as a little baby. So now this one is, we got to give credit to some of the mares that came into these bloodlines. So this is a weanling filly in 1975. This is Ray Peets and Driftwood's Misfire. And of course she changed the breed with her looks. She was a daughter of Chip O'Leo. Everybody knows I've talked about the Corridor's Chip O'Leo a lot and promoted that. Ray Peets, uh, she was a big part of his program. It's still going on today, the Chip O'Leo bloodline because it's in kiddo tough and high avatar so it's in a whole bunch of stuff but this filly was so modern looking in 75 she won the futurity she was the high seller uh, for 2200 she was purchased by harold slagle well harold slagle ended up breeding her to his friends lalon's new stallion in 78 series silver prince and the result was high avatar and, of course, Hive Avatar became a very, very famous POA. And uh, I think Hive Avatar and Siri Silver Prince just don't get the credit they deserve, mainly because of the gray and the stigmatism to them. As you can see here, he was born a very beautiful color and was already, by the world show, he was already starting to, what some people used to say, wash out. Or, but, you know, it wasn't a roan. He was actually graying out. He was turning uh, solid gray or solid white. So I'm not looking at too many comments here. Interesting how strong the gray gene is. That's Jan, Tracy, because people keep using them. Have to. Yeah. So, yeah, gray, once it skips, and you'll see some of these as we go through pictures, once it skips, it's not supposed to come back. So if one of these stallions were to have an offspring that wasn't gray and didn't turn gray, uh, then they can't produce a gray foal if they're not bred to another gray. So, so here's Avatar winning the world show. Here he is at the national show. Now what helped make Hive Avatar a famous, famous POA is he really used the POA system, which sounds funny, but because uh, he didn't know he was doing it and I don't think his owners realized it, but the POAs was changing so rapidly when he came along with different programs and stuff. And he took full advantage of all these programs. The Flexire Futurity, started in 1982, while well, his first full crop being born in 79 was 1982. So he dominated the select sire futurity uh, for years because his first full crop came along at the first one. And then at the international show as a baby in this picture right here, uh, he was reserve grand champion stallion, first a baby ever to do that. And then Burnt Sugar did it in 1982, a Victor product uh, by Plotted's Crusader. And then of course, a couple years ago, we had the baby that actually went grand uh, from Texas, but uh, this was the first baby ever to go reserve grand, and that was Hive Avatar. So we're gonna talk about Avatar for a while and some of his offsprings, then we'll get back into Series Silver Prince. But Avatar was one of the uh, strongest lineage of the Series Silver Prince line for sure. Uh, Series Silver Prince only had 40 some registered foals and he didn't have any sons that sired foals, so Avatar really helped uh, spread the bloodline. So as a yearling, Avatar was shown quite a bit, but then he started having a few height issues. Here's a colored photo of that same picture, but he was just a model POA, well put together. And then they kind of just put him on a shelf for a while because he was a little taller and stuff, but then the height changed and he was fine, but they still just kept him at home 
course, the Slagles had him. And I interviewed uh, Harold Slagle a long time ago about the Spots Included book, and uh, he told me a pretty cool story. He said it was about 1988, and he was in the barn one evening after working all day, and uh, they were clipping some babies, getting ready for the futurity in Iowa, or it might have been in Indiana by then, I think it was. And getting ready for the select sire for charity, uh, going to campaign some babies and condition them, and they were body clipping them and do, you know, everything we know you got to do to get a baby ready. And he said he, uh, he walked out of the barn, and he sat down on the stoop of the barn there on the step, and he just kind of put his head in his hands, and he just started thinking, and he said, ah, this, this is it. He said, it's time to retire from POAs and from the show horses. Uh, the Slagle family owns uh, many grocery stores in, the, I think, the Quad City area there. People can fill us in on that. But uh, he'd had Avatar since he was a baby, since 79, and this was 88. He'd promoted his babies and uh, had a lot of people, good breeders, breed to him. And uh, he figured it was time to sell them. So uh, he decided to put him for sale. So how did he go about doing it? Well, he contacted a POA girl that had grown up showing some of the Avatar babies as weanlings and stuff. And now she was a pretty good trainer. She grew up in POAs as Jill Arp. And by the time she got back in contact with Avatar, she was married to Dale Ellsworth. So she was Jill Ellsworth. And here's a picture of her when she first uh, started campaigning Avatar. They decided to put him on the road in 1989 and then consigned him to the national sale. And he hadn't been shown under saddle ever at a POA show, and he hadn't been shown in halter since his yearling year. So that was quite an accomplishment to put him on the road, a 10-year-old stallion. Now you gotta remember, he was, I said, kind of working the system. He, he, by this time, he was a household name in the POA breed as a sire of futurity champions. He had had a couple halter winners too, adults. We'll get to those in a minute. Uh, but he was, like, again, a model horse, and uh, but just, you know, people hadn't really seen him in a long time, and newer people in POAs had never seen him. So they put him on the on the road and showing him, and uh, Cindy Hayes was the girl that was riding him for Jill, and this is her here. She did get a good job. She wasn't a real experienced rider, so riding a 10-year-old stallion that hadn't been shown before, uh, she did a great job. And here's the write-up that they wrote about him uh, when they decided to... Uh, consign him to the sale pretty good write-up and how it's uh, talking about you know it's hitting all the when where what stuff and then they give credit to Ray Peets about the filly we just talked about the mother and if you can see this if it's blowed up enough you can see the Futurity he had a full place every year in the Futurity up to 1989 and uh, they'd won $13,000 worth of money so and uh, Slagle's even mentioned uh, Paula C. Corson there, Paula Cooper Corson, uh, they t and she's the breeder of Series Silver Prince. They give credit to her. So a real good uh, story there, uh, advertisement by Harold Slagle uh, when he decided to consign Avatar. So here he is, another picture of him. This is him at the international show. He didn't win it, but he placed, I think, third, they might say, in this write-up. But he did pretty well that year, especially at the Mid-America and stuff. And, of course, he did top the sale and broke the record, held it for quite a while. He broke Pokey Plotted's record of 8,000, and uh, he still has the stallion record that I know of. So if you count age stallions at 8,100. Of course, he was purchased by someone that had been breeding to him. Uh, both the Damon family and Marlene Borjan from Iowa had been breeding to Avatar and having great success, especially in the Futurity. And the woman in the middle there just left of... Jill. Jill is holding him. And then that's uh, uh, Marlene Borjan, the person that purchased him. And then to the left of her, of course, are his breeders and the people that consigned him, the Slagles. And then that's Cindy to the far right. And that's Olin Ziegler on the mic. He was the pedigree reader, chair of the pedigrees for many, many years. Uh, Doug Sorrell was already the salesman, or the, sales, the, the auctioneer. He cried the sale. Uh, this would have been like his fifth or sixth sale. So this was one of the later records for him to obtain and keep was the stallion record. So I know he's proud of that. But anyway, just another good look at him. And here he is out in the backdrop after the sale because it was a big deal selling for that much money and then him changing hands. 
And uh, it had kind of jump-started his career again uh, because Marlene would breed even more mares to him. So now we're going to look at some of the avatar babies. Keep in mind, we are going to go back to, to Sirius Silver Prince. So uh, one of the great friends of avatar through the years, you know, he had a lot of people. Of course, the Slagles were his breeders. Dean Damon helped make him famous. Marlene Borjan bought him and helped make him famous. But his best friend throughout the years was Jill Arp Ellsworth. Jill Ellsworth for sure. And uh, she wrote a lot of his, and that's to the next set of using the POA rule changes and stuff. The JPFC helped Avatar immensely. If it wasn't for the JPFC, his foals wouldn't have got as famous as they did, I believe, because a lot of people like Charlie Densmore and Jill uh, rode his foals to a lot of national titles in that competition. So the 19 and over and the, basically the JPFC. So here's Hiva Sophia, and that's uh, Harold Slagle. That's the first year in 82, the first year of the Slick Sire. She placed in the top four. And then there's Jill, the young girl showing Avatar's Gambit. He placed in the top four in the Colts. Here's Avatar's Mucho and Dean Damon, and they placed really high. I think they were like third in the, that would have been in 83 Colts. Gambit was actually after that, but I put him in the slide order on purpose because I got about 100 pictures of Avatar. It's Mucho I'm gonna go through. So yeah, this Mucho was 83 and Gambit was 84. Of course, Gambit was from Slagles and Mucho's from the Damons. So the Shocker family from Missouri purchased Avatar's Mucho and made him a famous stallion, a grand champion stallion at the national show in, in 88. And made him a, Andrea made him a supreme champion. Here he is winning the world in 84. They also won the, the trailer race in 84. That was one of the most contested classes in history of POAs. We'll have an episode on that. I've alluded to that in the past, but some very famous yearlings showed that year at a lot of shows, 40-some shows. I think all five or six went to in the top five or six. So, And Mucho came out on top. Here he is. This was on the cover. That's Andrea and Mucho. Gary Hamilton did a really nice set of photos with him here. I think when he won, Grand. Another Hamilton photo, another one. Again, Mucho never quite got the recognition. I mean, he was a grand champion and he was a supreme champion his foals ended up winning seven 27 titles uh he had like mucho's easy jazz and uh there was some other ones that uh, i don't know if avatars war lance or some of those but anyway he had quite a few foals and uh, he didn't have the greatest mares that came to him uh, but compared to some of the others like uh avatar and series silver prince probably bred a little better type of mare but he was still a nice looking horse he was the most beautiful color, uh, Mucho. Well, he sure was. Avatar's Mucho was a, he was a, a different color for sure. And I got to think that gray had something to do with it. He didn't turn gray, but he was a unique color like some of them will be. Uh, we could talk all about that on an episode as well. But, uh, yep, somebody mentioned Charlie Densmore and Dunup Sensational. We're going to get get to her. She was one of the greats. So here's some more of Avatar's Mucho and Andrea. Like I say, he became a supreme champion. So, and there he was on the cover again. Oh. If you're a grand champion at the national show and a supreme champion and you ended up siring 20-some wins as a sire, I'd say you had a pretty good career. And he placed high, like third as a baby in the Futurity. Uh, Janet Damon sent me these pictures of Corey when he was young. I believe this is Avatar's Jackie. I hope I'm not screwing that up. Corey's on the combine. Maybe he can tell us, but I'm pretty sure that's Avatar's Jackie, one of their Hive Avatar foals. And this is Avatar's Lil' Lady. She won the Select Sire for Charity in 1985. Of course, that's Dean and uh, the Damon matriarch there, Eileen. Damon, she really got him started. Dean's mother, she and Dean got into POAs, him and his brother as kids because of her. 
and uh, she was really the the brains of the outfit, and you know was had the eye for horses. Of course, Dean and his son Corey do as well. Uh, but it's been three generations of great horse people there and POA people, and they've been raising the good POAs for a long time. Of course, that's Avatar's owner at the time because it is the select sire for charity. You can barely see the trophy he's holding in his hand, but that's Harold uh, Slagle standing behind Avatar's little lady. Of course, she would become a well-known POA. She won. Again, there's the Midwest Regional I referred to. That's her as a yearling. She had that neat mark on her right leg. It wasn't really a true sock, but she had that light color on her for a bay. Um, that was re very distinctive. And then, of course, here she is making history as the Select Sire for Charity winner in 85 and then the grand champion mayor in Oklahoma City in 1987. So she was Avatar's first of, I believe, three grand champions he had. And then she was purchased by the Hanson family in Minnesota. But that's her breeder there, Dean. So here's another Damon Bread uh, champion, Avatar's Emperor. And he won the 1988 Colt class. Making Avatar a, a select sire champion again. I believe he had Foles place in the select sire for charity 13 different years. And I know he did 13 different years, but the first seven years, he had one in the top four. The first year he didn't have one place was the year he sold at the sale in 1989. That year, he didn't have a full place, which was ironic. But then the next year, he'd have one for several years after that, especially once Marlene started campaigning him. Uh, he had several places in the top four for years out of her great mares. So here's another picture of Avatar's Emperor. He sold for $2,200. Uh, same price that Series Silver Princess, uh, or Avatar, I mean, his mother sold for. Uh, anyway, uh, he was purchased by Tammy Neblock, Illinois. And he went on to do some stuff in JPFC as well, Avatar's Emperor. So here's Dunup Sensational and a young Maggie Lagrasso. Uh, Maggie was always uh, had great horses that she showed. Of course, she made them great. They might have been good, and she made them great because she was uh, is a very good equestrian and uh, one of the bright stars of, in POA youth of all time. And of course, she rode the Crisco Kid and other really good POAs. But Dunup Sensational was a a gray mare that she campaigned and did well on, especially when she was younger, like the nine through twelve days. And uh, now, Dunup Sensational was a 1990 uh, mare, and then Avatar Skip a Star was her full sister, and then there was the fourth edition, there was, I think, Johnny Knight or something like that in between them, and then Avatar's Peppy Perfection, I don't have a picture of, but they were all full siblings out of a Wheeze Camp mare, an own daughter, a Skipato, I believe her name was, she's a Skipato or something like that, and it was Marlene's black mare that she bred to Avatar. And uh, those foals won a ton of classes. So a big chunk of Avatar's wins from a mature POAs were these offspring here, which was done up sensational and Avatar's skip a star and then the fourth edition. Here's another picture of Avatar skip a star. Just a very talented mare. And then she was bred later on when her career was done, her show career, to Johnny Gottaluk, the Puffenbarger bred stallion when he was in Arkansas. And out come this nice looking filly who went to California and became pretty famous. There she is on the cover, and that's Gottaluk Sensational. So she was a granddaughter of Hive Avatar, if you remember her. Here's Avatar Skip a Star. This would have been the 91. And they look similar. This mare was a little prettier in the head. I remember having a conversation one time with Jackie Nemers, who is really a, a true historian uh, in POAs, too. I know she hasn't been to m many POA events lately, but uh, we were talking about these gray mares and how they were so smooth and nice looking. And they were good halter mares, but they didn't do as good as some of the others. And she thought it was because of their color and how their muscles just kind of blended in the shapes of it, you know, the lines. And she's right, because few spots are the same way. 
nowadays there's been there's so many few spots in our breed and homozygous that they've won more at the national show but you still don't have many uh, grand champions that are few spots and it's the same way with the gray horses it's harder for them with their muscle definition with that color to show off i think how they're built because both these mares were were very awesome uh, built mares and of course they were very talented in the the ring as well jill uh Jill Ellsworth showed this mare in one, as you see the saddle and the trailer there. Charlie Densmore won with Dunup Sensational. Both great uh, youth trainers. Both grew up in POAs and became really good uh, JPFC trainers. Here's another full sibling now. A little different color here, but this is the fourth edition, and he was the fourth full out of that cross. Again, bred by Marlene uh, Borjan from Iowa. And here's Frankly Fantastic. He won grand, the Grand Champion Stallion title as a yearling in 1993. His mother, S.S. Katie, had produced the Grand Champion that won in 1981, and that was at, uh, High Plains Drifter. So that was double tough to S.S. Katie. And then all those years later, Avatar to S.S. Katie, there's the color photo of it, produced Frankly Fantastic, and he ended up grand champion as a yearling another avatar offspring and i'm just scratching the surface here we could have a four-hour show just on avatars it's kind of ironic series silver prince didn't have that many foals less than 50 registered and avatar had a lot of registered foals and maybe not as many as some stallions but the percentage of the foals he had to the percentage of showers was very high you know a lot of his foals hit the show ring especially at least as babies. So here's Avatar's hot buttered rum. And I had to show him because he's a very beautiful uh, POA. Mary from Iowa sent me this picture. I'm glad she did. I was scrambling in books and I knew I wouldn't be able to find a colored photo of him. And there again, Tracy is very unique, isn't it? You have the graying gene, but then out come this beautiful buckskin, you know, and one of the prettier buckskins ever in the breed. And his sire was a gray with the graying gene. So it's just kind of unique, this co the color. That's why I'm drawn to Appaloosas and POAs, because of the, the color challenges and just the uniqueness of it. So somebody said hi to me just a few minutes ago. Hi. I'm trying to read all the comments. I hope you guys are enjoying the show. We're in the Avatar portion of the Silver Show tonight. The next episode will be focused solely on the Silver Kid and his offspring. He has so many offspring. Uh, but tonight's show studied a little bit of the heritage, if you're just joining us, of series Silver Prince. Of course, he was born in Arizona in 1972 to the legendary Siri program, Paula Cooper Corson. And... Uh, Anyway, now we're talking about his one of his sons, uh, Hive Avatar. This is a son of his here, Hot Buttered Rum. Uh, but we'll get back into Series Silver Prince right now, in fact. I'm going to take a drink, and we're going to start talking about Series Silver Prince again. So like I mentioned, Series Silver Prince was bought, purchased by the Lalans, who was the Cayuga POA people. And... By the early 80s, they were, you know, age was starting to catch up with them. They decided to get out of POAs. And the last registered foal from their operation was Katie Cayuga. She didn't even carry the Cayuga prefix, but she had it in her name. And she became a great POA. I believe Kevin Jewell conditioned her as a three-year-old and campaigned her. She went, won out in Colorado. Uh, Would have won the probably the yearling fillies, I think. And, of course, she was a daughter of Siri Silver Prince. And here, Harold Slagle, the breeder of Avatar, had her consigned to this sale in, uh, I think, 82 or 3. It might have been 84 already, but this is a yearling picture of her here. So she went on to do quite a bit of stuff. Another Siri Silver Prince offspring, some more that I don't have pictures of tonight, but I want to make sure I mention uh, Surefire, sometimes known as Surefire Angel. She was a full sister to Avatar, and she was solid gray too, or white, and uh, she went on to do pretty well for herself. She was in the top 10 and uh, and was a good POA. Jan Rogers just said they owned Cricket. Yeah, I remember you guys had Cayuga's Cricket. There again is Joker's High Tiger. That's the sire to Paper Tiger, so he was a son of Joker B. So and then another 
daughter that I need to mention is my girl Haley. She was, a, I believe, an 86 Series Silver Prince, born in Iowa. And I know some people watching tonight probably have connections with her. She was a good uh, POA. And then we're going to get to some more pictures here. So when Lalons decided to get out of POAs, they had the stay in that they really didn't go after anyway, Series Silver Prince. And he wasn't quite famous yet, even though Avatar was starting to make a name for himself. But in the early 80s, um, Wally Cates was a construction uh, or a contractor at a construction company in Minnesota. It says Minneapolis, but it was a little west of Minneapolis where he actually lived. And he'd raised his uh, kids in POAs, and by this time they had aged out. And so he purchased Series Silver Prince. The rumor is that he, he re uh, built a roof on a barn or something like that for the lawns. It was a trade deal. I don't think any money changed hands. And he took the stallion home to Minnesota, and he used him for a few years. And at this point in time is when the color really started to become an issue. Some of the Midwest breeders uh, started making uh, remarks and just, I don't want to get too negative, but just about the gray. And, you know, I'm, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's went on into the breed and it's still there. So I'm not going to knock it. You know, some of the greatest POAs in the history of the breed uh, have gray in their genes. So. But this colt was born in 1981 at Kate's place, and he wasn't gray. And it looks like he had a snow cap uh, as well. They put a uh, blanket to withers with few spots. You know, they didn't really know that much about snow caps, even already in 81. But I'm surprised Wally didn't keep this horse. I know he was very proud of him, but he consigned him to the sales, a yearling. Again, you look in the description, he won the Midwest Regional uh, yearling colt class. And uh, he was really proud of him he named him kate's prince and he didn't turn gray he kept his color and there he is as a two-year-old he was consigned i seen him in person as a yearling at kate's place and then i seen him at our first sale in 83 he was a two-year-old and i remember wally and his wife uh, went over to the owners because he was gilded and they were just sick about him they had him back in the sale and they gilded him but i think he had some medical reasons as why they had to gild him uh, but he was a very pretty horse and kind of a sign of things that were going to come uh, in the future with some of the series Silver Princes. Even though he didn't get that famous, uh, he was a very cool-looking POA. So Cates has raised quite a few out of him. Not a lot, but in the few short years they had him, they you know had two to four a year probably. Here's another 81 filly, uh, Cates Miss Joker. And then here's Cates sundowner now she's a full sister to a, a well-known series silver prince daughter kate sheree uh, sheree was owned by the carl oz family from granite falls minnesota and then uh, becky victor baker's daughters wrote her uh, and she was a small short poa she was a, a very good uh, kids pony and this is a full sister to her of course sheree was a famous uh, poa a gamer, an own daughter of the Appaloosa Sundowner, who was known for speed. Kate's Can Magic. Some of these didn't get that famous, but I just put them in here. Uh, most of the ones by the Kate's program because they consigned them to the sale. Here's Kate's uh, Copenhagen. Now this is a full brother to a mare that would go on to be known a little bit. Her name was Kate Siri Rex. She was a Miss Rex daughter. Of course, Kate's Miss Rex is the mother to uh, Tracy. Will come on here and say it. But Kate's Tough Rexy when Double Tough bred her. But when Siri Silver Prince bred Kate's Miss Rex, you got this one, and then you also got Kate's Siri Rex, and she became the mother to Tough My Tough, and Tough My Tough became the grandmother to Kiddo Bounce. So kind of cool information there. Yep, Becky's on here. Good, Becky. She was a supreme champion with my girls. She sure was. And she wasn't a very big mare. Yep, they bought her from uh, Carl and Susan. Yep, Susan Hammer. Carl used to make trips to, he'd stop by at our place on his way to go scout out some stuff from Cates's because the last few years there, after they got rid of Series Silver Prince for sure, uh, they didn't really consign to the sale and their stuff just kind of got picked off uh, off their farm you know they didn't promote them so when they'd have foals 
they might be two or three years old already and somebody would come and, and get them. Yep, she was 51 inches. So that's Kate Cherie we're talking about uh, with Becky there. Okay, so you might wonder, why is Dean back in this segment here without a Siri or an Avatar? And uh, this is tougher end jackpot. And the reason he's in here is because Siri Silver Prince's life would change once again. And again, I've just heard this from rumor and stuff that he was traded for tougher end jackpot. Now, he was already older. He wasn't a baby. In 1982, the Damons were second with jackpots, my daddy, and fourth with tougher end jackpot at the first select sire for charity. And then I think it was probably 84 or so when he traded Tough Rand Jackpot to Wally Cates and he brought Siri Silver Prince uh, to Iowa, back home to Iowa, because he had been a big uh, supporter of Avatar. Dean had been. So he went and got Avatar's sire, and that was a good decision because here's I'm a Silver Rado. Of course, I'm a Silver Rado ended up being a pretty famous uh, gilding, but here he is as a yearling colt. And I remember seeing him in person as a baby. He had the tiniest head. I always wondered how they got a halter to fit him. This is a yearling. He was a reserve grand champion staying in this photo. And look at that tiny, cute little head. That is just a gorgeous, gorgeous head. So, and this is Ama Silverado. And there he is with Jill. Jill Ellsworth campaigned him. For Damon's and then the Damon sold him and Tara ended up showing him and doing very well here she is on the cover very young at the time and there's that pretty head again oh, I'm a Silverado he was just a good POA and then Tara's sister ended up showing Avatar's Peppy Perfection I believe uh, they got along good with both those guys okay Here's a very iconic photo, 1988. That's Dean and his mother, and they won the Futurity both ends of it. They were the first family to do it, first people to do it. It's been done a few times since, I believe probably three times since or so. Uh, but uh, Eileen is holding Avatar's Emperor, the Colt that won by Hive Avatar, and Dean is holding I'm a Silver Annie, the series silver prince daughter she won the phillies and emperor won the colts the same day so that's a pretty cool picture a proud moment for their family a very good photo there i'm glad we got it in color that was on the cover of the night of the november i believe catalog of 1988 not december but i think it was november and here's the write-up with that picture so and it talks about Eileen and Avatar's Emperor, and then I'm a Silver Annie by Siri Silver Prince. Of course, Siri Silver Prince was kind of like Prince Fury. Everybody calls the Appaloosa Prince Fury, but when he was registered in the Appaloosa Stud Books, his name was Prince with an apostrophe S, Prince's Fury. Same way with Siri Silver Prince. For years, I called him Siri Silver Prince, but his real legal registered name is Siri's Silver Prince. So here's Annie again. I'm a Silver Annie. Of course, she'd go on to make a big mark in the breeding program. In a breeding program, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But another great picture of mother and daughter here, the Damons. A great uh, history they've cut out for themselves and POAs. Here she is again. And here she is when they consigned her to the international sale. She won the Midwest uh, Regional Grand Champion Mare as a three-year-old. There she is in the picture. That's her again as a three-year-old because she won the Select Sire in 88. So she was purchased by uh, Doc Jones. He'd been in Wisconsin. His kids had showed. Katie and Dottie and uh, Matt Jones were always well-mounted on good POAs. And this was when he decided to start raising some POAs. And he had uh, Major Shannon for a while, the great Appaloosa Stallion Leopard little guy, uh, before he went to the Steels. And he bred Major Shannon to this mare. And out came a great, great mare 
Major's Legacy. And Major's Legacy is one of the cornerstones of the RY program out in Utah, one of the hottest programs going today, uh, which it should be. They got a lot of great champions, and of course the Gardner family. And uh, Mike does such a good job, and Jordan, his son, still shows for them. They work hard at it, but they're, they're good at it too. They got a good eye. And this mare is a big part of their program because they bought her daughter, Major's Legacy. And of course she became the mother to many, uh, Good RYs, but of course, RY Major Equity, probably the most notable. And again, Ann sent me a picture of him, like I said earlier, and it just missed the deadline, missed the cutoff. It was my fault, but I tried to put it on here, and I don't think it got in the queue. We'll see at the end. So, so another great part of history uh, here with I'm a Silver Annie, a Futurity winner, and then a, a grand dam of a very uh, famous POA. So here's another loud colored, nice blanketed uh, silver. This is high ho silver. Uh, Damon showed him as a yearling, I believe. Hanson's bought him from Minnesota too, the Hanson family, the same people that had bought uh, Avatar's Little Lady. But this was a series Silver Prince son here. Uh, I'm a silver, or high ho silver. Now I'm a silver Annie was a full sister uh, to Silverado, I believe. Okay, here's another part of the, the silver line. This is I'm a Silver Royal. And he was by the Court Horse Big Ruby from the Damon program and a son of, um, of uh, Series Silver Prince. And he was solid gray or white. And he uh, did a great job for the Freeders. Uh, Hank and Mary Helen Freeder. Of course, Hank was a very good horseman. And he had a really nice bright eyes brother, Brad Mare. He raised some good POAs in a short time out of her. And of course, one of the best was HMH Super Sox. So the famous mare Super Sox, she's an own granddaughter of Siri Silver Prince. And there she is as a baby. Hank placed in the Futurity very high with a bunch of full siblings. He won it one year with one of her full brothers. And of course, she went on with the McKinsey's to win a bunch, bunch of stuff. Uh, the youngest McKinsey daughter, of course, Elena, won a bunch. This is Allison here. I'm sure she... She would be happy if she's watching this. She's a close up there. Sorry, but I just took that shot out of that family picture because uh, that mare is so beautiful, and that's a good picture of her. So there's Elena, of course, with Ashley's daughter. So it continues. Circle of life keeps going around, and the mare's getting older now, of course, but she won so many national titles, some big, tough classes too, HMH Super Sox. And then she became the mother of uh, the Caribbean kid, her one and only foal, and he's won quite a bit of stuff and still going. So the line's still continuing there. So here's Tough My Tough, and she, like I say, kiddo tough bred a Kate's mare because of the Minnesota connection and got Tough My Tough, and then she was bred to another bounce, got Heaven O Bounce, when that mare was bred back to Kiddo Tough, out came Kiddo Bounce. This ain't the greatest picture of him, but you know, he's he is a small little guy, stout, of course, as wide as he is tall, and he's proven to be one of the greatest sires of the last 20 years. Him and the Silver Kid both, so kind of Kiddo Bounce and Halter and some performance, and then the Silver Kid and definitely in performance and a little bit of Halter, so, uh, and they're both related to Kiddo Tough, but they're both related to Series Silver Prince. So there's that picture of Series Silver Prince again, and I just want to check my notes before I go, make sure I mention everybody. I got some more pictures, so don't tune away yet. So I, I do have a little bit more, but we're winding down a little bit on the, the show. So uh, I got a pretty cool presentation I want to show towards the end here. But, you know, spots included, I always plug this book, but if you get a copy of it, Avatar is chapter 21, Hive Avatar, and Series Silver Prince is chapter 13. I kind of did that on purpose because of kind of his bad luck with the color and different things and uh, some, some of his life, so I put him chapter 13. Uh, but then his son, Hive Avatar, is chapter 
21. I'm very proud of these chapters in this book. Uh, and I'm just going to read you a little bit from this chapter. Uh, and this talks about the color again. And I talk about how he was born and that. And then I say, unfortunately, as spring turned to summer and summer to fall, it was evident that the Weanland colt had inherited the graying gene from his sire. However, it didn't matter what color Hive Avatar was, he was almost unbeatable in the show ring as a baby. Well, then he ended up being almost unbeatable as a sire. Uh, and I, I write in here, too, how he became a champion sire of babies, then a champion sire of grand champions. He had three grand champion offspring, which is very uh, unheard of. And then they became performance champions. So his life was like three stages as a sire. You know, a baby producer, then the really became well-known, kind of almost pigeonholed as a halter sire. Then all of a sudden here came Dunup Sensational and Avatar Skip a Star and Hot Buttered Rum and a whole bunch of others, Mucho, and uh, they all started doing well in performance. So that just added to the bloodline again. So I'm just in love with this picture here because, like I say, this picture is almost as old as I am. The horse is as old as I am, and I'd never seen it till the other day. So, again, thanks to Lindsay. Uh, for producing this picture for me. And there's Avatar again as a baby. Kind of always a cool shot because we always think of him standing in the ring, or I do anyway, as a 10-year-old stallion. So seeing him as a cute little baby there with his breeder is a cool shot. And there he is again as a yearling. And with Cindy, when they were promoting him to sell him, there's a better color, the original photo there. I've been blessed to get good pictures over the years from people. So this is a little interlude to the next episode. This is the Crisco Kids full sister, and her name is Kids Double Sweet. What is she doing on this show, you ask? Well, that's Corey Damon holding her there, young Corey. And when he sold I'm a Silverado to Tara... Uh, he purchased a young filly and her name was Kids Double Sweet and he turned around and bred her to Hive Avatar and the result in 1995 was the Silver Kid so this is the mother to the Silver Kid and she's the mother to quite a few others too as well her and Rough and Tough nicked pretty well uh, even though they were half brother and sister uh, but, of course, the Silver Kid ended up being the leading sire of all time and just kind of really changed the performance of POA bloodlines, not counting the apps and the court horses that have been put into the bloodlines. Uh, so the next episode, episode 26, is going to be talking about her son and all his offspring, the Silver Kid. So, and there he is. Of course, he's in the Hall of Fame already. I remember seeing him at the Iowa Futurity in 1995, not the Select Sire Futurity, but the Iowa State Futurity. I went down there with a Takapa Gold filly with Jackie uh, Guthrie, a filly I had, and I hitched a ride with her, and I, had, I remember seeing him. He was the last foal, I believe, to place in the Select Sire Futurity by Hive Avatar, and he placed 10th in 1995. I think a filly... One of the high hopes or whatever from Marlene uh, placed that year too, or Lil Mo Kate, one of those fillies. Uh, Marlene had so many great mares and, and offspring by Hive Avatar. She, uh, I wish I could have had her as a guest tonight uh, because she really produced a lot of good foals and she always had a, a super broodmare band that a lot of people didn't see her mares, uh, but they were a nice herd uh, in Iowa. So here's a cool picture. Uh, Lori Wilson Knight put this together for me and uh, well not for me she just did it but it's cool this is her young stallion LP right on target with her son uh, Colton that's on the left and of course that's that ring shot with Avatar and Marlene Borjan in the background but uh, Lori was kind of struck by the heads head resemblance I don't think she'd ever seen a picture of Avatar surely not in person and of course Avatar that's his grandson there. That's a silver kid son. We'll be talking more about uh, LP right on target more next time, next episode, because he's one of the silver kids get, and he's one of the few stallions out there uh, by that line. Just like Sirius Silver Prince and Hive Avatar didn't have that many sons, 
uh, the silver kid is almost done breeding. You know, he's 20 some years old being a 95 model. He just doesn't have that many sons out there. So there's one of them. And uh, I thought that was a cool side by side there that Lori did for us. And then she did this too. Four generations. I thank her for this. Series Silver Prince in the upper left, his son Hive Avatar in the upper right, the Silver Kid, Avatar's son in the bottom right, and then her stallion, the son of Silver Kid, LP, right on target. So there you go, four generations of stallions there. Uh, three of them are legends, and LP right on target. If he's on target to be a legend, they keep promoting him the way they are and showing him. Of course, her son Colton shows him. So, again, thanks to Lori for doing that. I want to thank uh, Tracy for helping me with the idea that we should split the Silver Kid to his own uh, episode because this show would have just been too long, and there's going to be picture after picture of Silver Kid and title after title in the next ep episode of his offspring. So that should be by itself. So that was a good call there, Tracy. As always, a shout-out to my buddy Jeremy up in Kansas. He's always... Uh, I'm glad he takes Tuesdays off. I'm usually off on Wednesdays, and he's off on Tuesdays. So when I'm at work and I'm away from my collection, I give him a text and say, hey, I'm missing this horse or I'm missing that horse. And again, tonight, today, he came through with a picture for me. So thanks, Jeremy. And just thanks to everybody that uh, watches and enjoys this show and helped with pictures. Uh, uh, some of the pictures didn't make it, I know, but I, I try as hard as I can to get everybody on there. Uh, if you want to still send pictures to me for the next episode, again, episode 26, next time we meet, will be about the Silver Kid. So I want to end it with a picture of Dean uh, Damon and myself. This was at the national show this year. I love this picture. Pat Burton took this picture. And uh, I just have so much respect for Dean. And he had a big part in this story by uh, breeding to Hive Avatar so many times and helping put him in on, on the map and then purchasing Series Silver Prince. And now it's came full circle with the Series Silver Prince son, the Silver Kid, that Corey Damon's the breeder of, and they, they stood for so many years at their place. And uh, we'll be talking about all the great Silver Kids, all the way from I'm a Tommy Kid up to Patrick, up to all these brand new boyfriend and waiting on a woman and all this stuff that's still coming out today. So it's almost generations in itself of one stallion in the silver kid. He's been breeding for so long. So, uh, thanks Terry for your comment. Thanks Becky for hanging around. I tried to make it a quick show. It's not even eight o'clock yet. So that's good. Uh, you can go enjoy La Brea or something on TV and, uh, again, thanks for watching. See you next episode. Enjoy the song.